today is Valentina's birthday. She is eight years old, getting big, so we are taking her to the sugar factory inside the Hard Rock. And my family left. Her. You excited, Valentino? This is super perfect. They got breakfast. This is the first time I see it. Yeah, I don't think it gets packed in the morning. Like this time, I think maybe it's towards brunch. Oh, it's the vibes. The future. Hey, that was Mary J. Smooth. So I don't know if you guys can relate, but um, my wife gets me with the purse a few times a day. Every time she moves it, it hits me. She's like looking like she thinks she's gonna get in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Whoa. I got a duck, a free duck. Here's what I got, salmon, steamed got, and big pancake. You guys know my wife always does, does it big. Look at the cake. It's a V for Valentina. I want a piece of this cake. And that guess what, it's from Publix. It's from Publix? Yeah. Dude, I want a piece of this cake. Y'all remember this, this kid, world famous, my nephew, Ollie. He got a soccer game today. What's up, we, we gonna be in your bag or what? All right, we're gonna see you. It's gonna be in the vlog. If you score a goal, I give you $20. Okay. That's a bet? Just one goal? One goal, $20. He's playing in a, a more competitive atmosphere, Elijah. Boy, your sister playing soccer and Ollie playing soccer, completely different, okay? They actually gonna play defense in his game. Or, or at least I'd like to think. Elijah, what do you think, he's gonna score or what? No. Why you supposed to be on your cousin's side? You got this? Yeah. All right, y'all. You're going to see. All right, this is the nephew's team. I don't know if y'all can spot him. They warming up. Boy got, got nosebleed seats. Nephew got the neon green cleats on. Nephew. Hey, he kicked out his left, though. Everybody else was using their right foot. Good job, guys. Uh, Ollie right there, he's right over there. No, that old goalie. Yeah, yeah. Goalie, that's their goalie. Take that from here, Ollie. Ollie got in trouble. Ref on his ass. Say what I do. We won, Ollie's team won. Ollie didn't score, score no goal, but he played great. The whole team played really, really good. I was impressed, man. These kids are in middle school. And they was balling, man. All right, guys, so today I have a very special episode. I think this is a good content, good idea. Guys, look how big Penny's got. Penny, say hi. She's kind of wet from being outside. She's grown so much already. Look at that. It's crazy. Penny, I gotta go, baby. No, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up. All right, so like I was saying, I think we got a great idea for a video today. And we are going to talk about some myths, maybe some wrong perceptions about the barbering profession that could have been spread, you know, from a barber who had a bad experience, who's not a barber anymore. It could just be a assumption, a lot of assumptions, and, you know, regurgitated and misinformation. And not necessarily because people are like trying to spread lies, but you know, that's might be from, like I said, a lack of information information ignorance not in a bad way or the way they did things just didn't work out for them and so i'm hoping that today i can offer you guys some information that might give you guys a clear picture of what the industry has to offer if you've been on the fence about it or if you're in the industry already and it's not really working that well for you i may be able to change your mind from quitting too soon before you've Tried making it work with a blueprint in mind. I'm heading to the office right now. I guess maybe at the stoplights and stuff as I get ideas, then I'll, uh, I'll record it. All right, so decide not to record in the car. We're just gonna do this right here, right now. Here's the thing with barbering. When you decide you want to be a barber, every state is different. You have to do research based on your state. The amount of hours you have to do are different in every state. The laws, the requirements. Um, some states allow you to do barber school or allow you to do what's called an apprenticeship. And you know, states like Florida, apprenticeship is not available. You gotta go to barber school, but you can get two levels of, of barber's licenses in Florida. One for 600 hours, one for 1200 i believe it's different in every state but every state 
I believe requires a license. I know there are some states that don't have a barber's license, so you gotta get a cosmetology license. But yeah, like I said, you gotta do your own research. Whatever people are telling you isn't gonna be true. It just isn't always gonna be true. It just depends on the state that you're in, county that you're in, what schools are available to you. It really sucks because if you get licensed in Georgia, for example, you need to keep in mind, if you plan on leaving Georgia in the next couple of years, you're gonna have to transfer your license and that might require you to go back to school, to retest, or so whatever you're plan is in the next three to five years let's say you're in new york you're gonna get licensed in new york but you want to move to california one day i don't know why you would want to do that no offense to cali but you have to keep in mind what is that transition for your license going to look like so do your research a lot of people don't know this they go and get their barber's license with a plan to move to another state not realizing you know there's going to be some challenges there if you haven't done your research prior to that now some states require a lot more than others and typically whatever state that requires more typically it's easier to transfer those licenses over so there are schools in florida for example that will not let you get out in 1200 hours or 600 hours they might require 1800 hours or 2000 hours because they want you to be able to easily transfer your license to different states my wife's school was like that so and a lot of people don't know that either so uh definitely wanted to share that with you guys as you're planning to go get your barber's license now your first year into the shop you want to choose a great environment for yourself i would not suggest going into a salon suite somewhere where you work by yourself i would not suggest going to an, a new shop unless the shop owner is a go-getter he's known in the industry and you know he's going to market and long term you're going to love working with uh, the people that are going to be working at this new shop typically what i would recommend especially the new barbers is go somewhere where there's a lot of walking traffic um where there's a lot of new clients booking appointments where pretty much everybody's booked you're needed because there's so much overflow there's so many people leaving because current barbers there can't can't take them that's a great environment to be in especially if they're starting at a decent price point as far as cutting hair because where you start is is going to make it more difficult for you to raise your prices later on there's been a lot of shop owners who have done amazing work in raising the prices in their shop and building a clientele that's not afraid to pay more. And so if at some point you wanna be at 30, 40, $50 a haircut, $60 a haircut, you wanna start off at a place that's higher than another. Because if you start out at $10 a cut, you're gonna to have to raise your prices till you get to that $60 range if that's where you, if that's your goal. And that's gonna be really difficult to do with clients that you, that you got at $10. Not impossible, but difficult to do. So you really gotta think about that. You wanna work in an environment, man, where the, where the shop owners, they ask you, you know what your goals are and stuff they're goal oriented and they care about your your goals your future it doesn't have to be the most ambitious thing it could be you just want to chill make decent money and chill cool if they care about that and um, they're going to help you accomplish that because that's your idea of success and that's that's the type of people you want to be around there are some shop owners that think that everybody should be working as hard as them and if that's the environment that you want to be in then then go for it knock yourself out how much money you should realistically make in your first year i would say 40 to sixty thousand dollars is a decent first year it's there are exceptions to that rule right there are people who who make uh, north of that much more than 40 60 thousand their first year i personally know a lot of barbers that have done that but they also have exceptional work ethic ambition they're always learning they're well prepared they can cut hair pretty well it's not set in stone but if you believe in yourself you think you can you you're gonna put in the work you're gonna study you're gonna take this seriously it doesn't take that much to self set yourself apart in this industry unfortunately there are a lot of people who are not that professional who aren't as excited about the profession and if you've been scared in the past by a barber who's not excited about the profession he's probably one of those guys who you're competing against and so if you are more passionate and you care more than that person you're probably going to do better than them the bar is not set really high unfortunately in this industry you guys know if you're a customer if you're a consumer if you're somebody who watches my channel because you want to get better at cutting your own hair i mean i'm sure you've been to a lot of barber shops you couldn't believe the customer service that was given or the lack of of care no consultations no greeting they act like you're like they're doing you a favor um as a customer that's what you're competing against guys so if anybody's telling you it's hard in this industry it's hard in this profession it, i think it's lack of knowledge or lack of perspective really but yeah you, your first year you should be if you're in a decent shop and you're marketing yourself and you, you're putting in work man you should be able to get to that 40 60 range pretty easily in your first year just do the math man just do the math your average ticket with tip let's say is 25 30 bucks how many customers would you have to do a week to get to that 40 60 000 mark 
it's not really that hard to hit. What I would say is after your first year, I would say a lot of barbers, if you are focused and you're putting in work and you're always learning and you're constantly growing, I would say go to hair shows, go to barber expos, um, go take classes, continued education. You know, if you wanna be great at something, you always gotta be practicing. You always gotta be learning. You never stop working with coaches. NBA players don't stop working with coaches. Um, bodybuilders don't stop um, working with a, a personal trainers. You know, they they no matter how great they are, there's always another level that you can be better so if you're that type of barber there's no reason why you can't hit north of six figures i know barbers after taxes making two hundred thousand a year and there's barbers in my mentorship that are doing well over a hundred thousand dollars a year and some of them make that type of money and they don't even know it because they don't track it it's not until somebody helps them organize their finances that they realize damn, I'm making six figures. I think that some of these barbers are also barbers that will tell other people that they only made 60K or 70K when they actually made 100, right? And then once their, their finances are organized, then they're able to do their taxes. And here's the thing, many barbers, a lot of barbers, like probably the majority of barbers never even get to a point where they know how much they're making because they don't, they don't know how to track or have any type of business organization. All they do is just go to the shop and cut hair and, and take care of their clients. A lot of barbers can do that their entire career without even knowing how much they make it's it's pretty I'm not gonna say it's sad but like i said it's it's lack of knowledge and, and there's no excuse all that knowledge is available for free on youtube you know you can make a lot of money in this industry and that's just cutting hair i mean we haven't even talked about opening barbershop opening multiple barbershops what about a barber school what about products what about added services or new services expanding broader in the industry maybe you get into salons and things like that i mean there's a lot of opportunities so anyways now let's talk about taxes right so what about taxes well higher cpa like you should be like if you have a w-2 you don't really need a cpa right but when you're self-employed you need a cpa which is an accountant you need to get with an accountant they'll give you the right business entities they'll help you save money on taxes and typically you'll probably pay less in taxes than you would if you had a w-2 and that just depends on how much you're making i'm talking about apples to apps right apples to apples situation you'll probably pay less in taxes self-employed because there are deductions there is depreciating assets especially if you own a barbershop you can do like an s corp i'm not an accountant i'm not giving you guys advice but i'm just giving you got some experiences that I've had. I'm like switching to an S core, paying less in taxes that way. There's all kinds of ways. The more you learn about taxes, the more you'll learn about building wealth. Cool. Now, what about benefits? Well, go to the marketplace, get health insurance. And what I've found is for most people, that's going to cost them less than a haircut a day. I mean, I have a family of four, myself, my wife, two kids. We're really, really healthy. So that's great. I pay less than a haircut a day for our insurance for all of us. And I'm talking about if the haircuts were like 20 bucks. What about retirement? If if you are paying your taxes, then you're paying into social security, which you should be, right? Not just that, but you can get self-directed IRAs, IRAs, or 401k, solo 401ks. You can set all that stuff up for yourself. You won't get like some matching or something like that, but you can put all that money into the stock market. You'll know what your money's in, whether it's in the index fund or something like that. And you just invest into that thing, just like you would at any job. Borrowers are not the only self-employed people out there. You know, there's a lot of doctors that are self-employed, a lot of uh, software engineers that are self-employed and they're able to do this and have the respect um, of any other career or profession, why can't we do it? You know, it's just lack of knowledge. Oh, but barbers, you know, you'll never be able to have credit or buy yourself a house. Nothing changes. You still build credit. You just got to know how to build credit. You got to get credit cards. You got to get a mixed credit report. Got to pay on time every single month. Your credit will build. You want to buy a house? You can buy a house. I would get with your bank. I would get with a mortgage broker. Typically, they want two years worth of income. If you're not doing your taxes, you, you know, you're not going to be showing income. That does not change just because you're a barber. Everybody needs to show income and pay taxes. Everybody does. And if you keep letting misinformation stop you from choosing this as a career, you know, you're going to end up being 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or towards the later years of your career and realize you could have done this. Hopefully this video changes some lives, man, for the good. It's not pandemic proof. Actually, I would, I would argue it is. Being not pandemic proof would mean that an industry was gone. It was destroyed, right? But once we opened back up, we were the, one of the most in-demand industries in the world. Everybody, the first thing people were doing were rushing to go get haircuts, to feel good, um, to get back in the shop. And, and we were booming once doors opened again. And even when things opened up, people were doing house calls, man. It's a it's a craft. It's a, it's a trade. There's always going to be business doing it. Haircuts are like the last 
best thing that people can afford that makes them feel instantly better, right? Like traveling makes you feel great. A lot of people can't afford that during a recession. They can always still afford a haircut. During recessions, business was booming. Obviously, the barbering industry is not perfect. Um, you take on much more responsibilities that you wouldn't have to take on if you were an employer. There's much more risk because if your business fails, it's on you, not on your employer. In the beginning, it's gonna be long hours. It's gonna be slow. A lot of barbers think you, you gotta work weekends. You don't. It's just a matter of how you design your business. The fact that you can create your own hours, it's a blessing and a curse. I know people who create their own hours and never show up to work or show up last and leave first, you know, and they don't make that much money. They complain about it, right? But then I know people who, who put in hours in the beginning and then they design their life the way they want it to um, and they still make a great amount of money because they did it the right way. I guess another negative that I would say is it, it's not as chill as everybody thinks. Like if you're making great money, if you're trying to get to the, like stupid income, you gotta understand you're gonna have long days on your feet standing up. So you gotta take care of your body. That's one thing that people think barbering is just really chill and stuff. There's days that I would leave the shop, man, and my feet were killing me, my back hurt, and it was, it was a lot. But if you know this and you invest in the right shoes, you invest in the memory foam mats, and you study posture, then you're gonna be straight. And you stay fit, you're gonna be all right. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm standing up a lot, but it's a lot of fun. You know, the interaction with people, It's to me, it's better than being in a cubicle, being in front of a computer screen all day. So yeah, guys, I think that's it for, for me. If I missed any, I might think about it later on. And maybe we do a second version of this video. But hopefully that was a, enough nuggets, enough insight for you guys to get some of your questions questions answered from somebody who's been in the field a very long time opened up seven barbershops in five years international educator of the year in 2019 i've seen the industry all over the world in different countries in almost every single state um and i can tell you i'm pretty experienced in this industry so if you don't take my word for it definitely do your own research fact check everything i was talking about and if you're in the comments below you can relate to anything that i that i'm saying add some confirmation in the comments below or add some nuggets in the comments below guys i love y'all i'll see you on the next next video.